إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله My dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The blessed days of the Hijjah, brothers and sisters in Islam They are blessed for those who are in Hajj Yes, the best deed that you can do during these 10 days is to go to Hajj to perform that pillar a pillar which grants you a new beginning Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says wal hadith fil Bukhari wa Muslim min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu an man hajja wa lam yarfuth wa lam yafsuq raja'a min dhunubihi ka yawma waladathu ummu Whosoever performs Hajj without committing any violation, he will come back like a newborn. Brothers and sisters in Islam, fi Sahih al-Bukhari, also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hadith Abi Hurairah as well, Al-Umrah ila al-Umrah kaffaratun lima baynahuma. From Umrah to Umrah, it expiates the sins that you have committed in between. والحج المبرور ليس له ثواب إلا الجنة. An accepted Hajj, a مبرور Hajj, and إن شاء الله will explain that has no other reward but Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, if you go to perform Hajj and Umrah. During these 10 days of the Hijjah, this is the best act that you can do. But I really would like to dedicate this episode of the series to those who are not in Hajj again. Because there is a misconception in the minds and hearts of a lot of Muslims that the 10 days of the Hijjah has to do only with those who are in Hajj. Meaning, if you have performed Hajj, then you do not have to do anything during these 10 days. Meaning that if you have performed Hajj, or if you are unable physically and financially to perform Hajj, that means you do not have to do anything. And you just live these 10 days of the Hijjah like any other days that you're living. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is absolutely incorrect and let's correct this today rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama fi hadith ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma he said ma min ayyamin and the hadith fi sahih al-bukhari ma min ayyamin al-amal al-salihu fiha ahabu ila allah min tilka al-ayyam yaqul ibn abbas ya'ni al-ashra there is no other days there are no other days the righteous deeds performed in which are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the deeds. Yani the deeds that you perform during the 10 days of the Hijjah, I hope I'm explaining this correctly, I'm not confusing you, are more beloved to Allah than the deeds that you perform during other days throughout the year. We mentioned certain deeds during the 10 days of the Hijjah which are important because it connects you with those who are not in Mecca, with those who are not in Hajj. We mentioned the restrictions for those who are planning to offer a Qurbani and brothers and sisters in Islam offering Udhiyah, a sacrifice on the 10th day of the Hijjah is 
an emphasized sunnah and some of the jurists considered it to be obligatory upon those who are able to based on a hadith fi sunan al-imam ibn Majah rahimahullah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man wajada sa'atan wa lam yudahhi fala yaqrabanna musallana if you're able to offer a qurbani financially and you do not do it do not come and pray with us he is basically referring to surah al-kawthar when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that surah connected the salah with the nahr inna a'taynaka al-kawthar indeed we have bestowed upon you o muhammad al-kawthar the river in jannah fasalli rabbika wanhar meaning if you're able to offer a qurbani if you're able to offer a sacrifice on the 10th day of the hijjah on the 10th day of the hijjah and you do not do it then do not come to pray because you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says salli fa salli wanhar fa salli li rabbika wanhar pray salatul eid then go back and offer the qurbani brothers and sisters in islam here is what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to those who are not in hajj hadith umm salama radiyallahu anha umm al mu'minin wal hadith fi sahih muslim qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you see the crescent al hilal the crescent of the hijjah wa arada ahadukum an yudhahi and you want to offer that qurbani falyumsik an sha'rihi wa adhafirihi let that person refrain from cutting his fingers uh, i'm sorry finger finger nails you're not supposed to cut your fingers to begin with but your finger nails and also your hair Brothers and sisters in Islam, we know for the people who are in Hajj, this is something called Mahdurat al Ihram, or Mahdurat al Ihram, meaning that if you enter into the state of Ihram, then you're supposed to refrain as well from cutting your nails and taking any of your hair. So here is the Sharia connected the uh, uh, people who are in Hajj with those who are not in Hajj. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we also, in the last episode, we talked about the takbirat, al-dhikr al-mutlaq, the unrestricted remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the takbirat. In the wording of Imam Ahmad, fi al-musnad, min hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من تلك الأيام يعني العشرة there is no other days on which deeds are performed are more beloved to Allah than the deeds that are performed on the 10th day of the Hijjah or during the 10 days of the Hijjah here is what I'm looking for and this is the wording of Imam Ahmad the, the narrator is Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم فأكثروا فيهن من التهليل والتحميد والتكبير meaning الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد عبد الله بن عمر الإمام البخاري compiled and Abu Huraira رضي الله عن الجميع they used to go out to the market reminding our righteous predecessors with this sunnah and they used to say these takbirat with a loud voice in order to remind them and the people used to remember it and they used to say it as well resurrect this sunnah brothers and sisters in islam if you are not in hajj do a lot of tahleel do a lot of tahmeed do a lot of tasbih do a lot of takbir during the la during the first 10 days of the hijjah the blessed days of the hijjah again the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by prescribing this for, for those who are not in Hajj, he is also sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tying those who are not in Hajj with those who are in Hajj. Meaning, we know that when we enter into the state of Ihram, if we are going to Hajj, there is a miqat, a boundary, a certain place that we cannot cross without entering into the state of Ihram. And you enter into the state of Ihram, 
by saying Allahumma labbayka umrah if you're about to perform umrah or saying Allahumma labbayka hajjah if you're about to perform hajjah then you immediately as soon as you get on your ride as soon as you, 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 you start uh, riding and going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you begin raising your voices with the talbiyah labbayka Allahumma labbayk لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك and you're supposed to say it with a loud voice brothers and sisters in Islam الإمام ابن ماجة رحمه الله القزويني compiled a beautiful hadith حديث خلاد بن السائب عن أبيه السائب بن خلاد رضي الله عنه وله صحبة he was with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his way from Medina to Mecca to perform the farewell Hajj and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called upon his companions and he said to him Ayyuhan Nas, my companions Atani Jibreel Anifa Jibreel alayhi salam came to me wa amarani an amura ashabi an yarfa'u aswatahum bit talbiyah and he commanded me to command my companions who are going to perform hajj to raise their voices with the talbiyah with saying this talbiyah لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك and then he said فإنها من شعائر الحج it is one of the rituals of hajj and subhanallah the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brothers and sisters in islam they used to lose their voices by the time they arrive at al hajr al aswad when you're supposed to cease you're supposed to stop the talbiya and begin your tawaf so here it is one of the acts that you can do if you are not in hajj is a dhikr al mutlaq the unrestricted remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the takbirat during the 10 days of the hijjah and do it with a loud voice with the intention of reminding the ummah of it resurrecting the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam brothers and sisters in islam the best day out of these 10 days is the ninth day which is the day of arafah and inshallah in one of the episodes we're just going to talk about the merits and the virtue of this day but i want to tell you that this is the day on which those who are in hajj earn that new beginning earn that forgiveness what about those who are not in hajj do they have a chance let's take a short break and come back and explain this bi'idhnillahi ta'ala assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك Why is Hajj so important? Allah the Almighty said in verse number 97 of uh, the third chapter of the Quran which is known as Ali Imran he said وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا تَابِعُوا بَيْنَ الْحَجِّ وَالْعُمْرَةِ فَإِنَّهُمَا يَنْفِيَانِ الْفَقْرَ وَالزُّنُوبِ Follow up performing Hajj after Hajj and Umrah after Umrah So what is the first step? Ihram The first pillar is Ihram What does Ihram and what does it mean? Hajj al-Ifrad Many of the local people do Hajj al-Ifrad and others because they're exempt from offering the Hajj or the sacrifice. It doesn't require Hajj. So when you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً وَحَجَّ That's called Qiram. And you do the rites of Umrah and you do not take off the Ihram condition. Rather, you continue until you finish the Hajj. So Al-Hajj and Al-Umrah and following up. Uh, between Hajj and Umrah for those who can afford it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives their past sins or whatever sins in between. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're talking about what you can do if you are not in Hajj to earn the rewards, 
to earn the virtues and the merits of these 10 days of the Hijjah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not deprive you if you are not in Hajj. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to explain to his companions that the most who are in Hajj with him, that the most important pillar of Hajj is the day of Arafah and standing, dusted and disheveled, dusted, shu'than, ghubra, and you're raising your hands, asking Allah to forgive you. And this is how, subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained it. Hadith fi sahih muslim, hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ma min yawmin, أكثر أن يعتق فيه عبد من النار من يوم عرفة. There is no other day on which Allah subhanahu wa taala will free more people on one day out of the hellfire than the day of عرفة. وإن الله لا يدنو. Allah subhanahu wa taala descends. Yes, we believe as Muslims that Allah descends, but how He descends, we don't know. Should we ask? No. Don't try to make any visualization, any visualization of his descending. Just leave it. Understand it. Believe it the way it is. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَدْنُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon the people who are standing in the area of Arafah, the mountain of Arafat. وَيُبَاهِ بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ and he looks at his angels, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he tells his angels, look at my servants. Atawni shu'than ghubra. They came to me dusted, disheveled. Ushidukum ya malaikati anni qad ghafartu lahum. My angels, bear witness that I have forgiven their sins. Ya Allah, what a beautiful, what a, this is when, when, by the way, if you are in Hajj, when you earn that new beginning, the day of Arafah, the day of Arafah. ولذلك, uh, therefore, there is a hadith, hadith mursal. Yani من, من, eh, uh, the, the chain of narration is not complete, but it has supporting evidence. والحديث في موطأ مالك, that the shaytan, Satan on this day, places sand on his head. Because all these people, four, five, six, seven millions, uh, whatever number it is, uh, standing in the mountain of Arafah, here they are, subhanallah, they earn forgiveness, meaning all the work of Satan for the previous years with these people is void now. Tayyib, what about those who are not in Hajj? What about those who are unable to make it this year? Brothers and sisters in Islam, you are not deprived. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was asked by Abi Qatada, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the virtue of fasting the day of Arafah, just fasting this day, fasting it for those who are not in Hajj, a warning, those who are in Hajj, it is not a sunnah, it is not recommended. As a matter of fact, a lot of the jurists see it highly disliked that you fast this day. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed those who are performing Hajj with him in Hadith Jabir fi Sahih Muslim that he is not fasting. He actually called upon a drink of water and he had it. He, he had that drink in front of everybody as he was delivering the khutbah or the sermon that a lot of the uh, people refer to khutbah al wada the farewell sermon. If you are in Hajj, it is not a sunnah, it is not an act that is recommended at all. And again, I want to warn my brothers who are watching us while they are in Hajj, it is highly disliked that you fast the day of Arafah. But Abi Qatada radiallahu an is asking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about fasting this day 
for those who are not in Hajj. The Prophet sallallahu says, it expiates fasting one day, one day it expiates the sins of the previous year and the coming year. طبعاً, this is not a license for you to go and sin the coming year. This is not how we should understand this statement. Remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all his previous and his future sins. لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ بِنَصِّ الْقُرْآنِ the first verse in Surah called Surah Al-Fatih that Allah is to forgive all your previous and all your future sins. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha saw him standing all night in tahajjud to the extent that his feet got swollen. Qalat ya Rasul Allah, she said to him, O Messenger of Allah, why do you do this? لماذا تفعل هذا؟ Why do you do this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all your past and all your future? And we're not talking about major sins here, ya ikhwa. We're not talking about major sins here. The messengers and the prophets are basically ma'sumin from committing these major sins. But here is a shahid. Aisha radiallahu anha is asking the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why are you doing this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you that favor? What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to her? Ya Aisha, afala akunu abidan shakura? Shouldn't I be a grateful servant of Allah for this? When you hear that statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive by the virtue of fasting one day, which is the ninth of the hijjah, which is the day right before the day of Eid, Eid al-Adha, the day of sacrifice. Allah will forgive all your past year sins committed in that year and all the sins that you're going to commit next year, you should take this uh, from the window of hope that you should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, we live in the West. I live in the West personally, and I interact a lot with Christians and other people of other faith. And one of the question, one of the questions that always come up is, what is the concept of salvation in Islam? For a Christian, they believe that Isa alayhi salam died in the cross for their sins. Nabiullah Isa was crucified for their sins. طبعاً هذا الكلام for us is incorrect. بنص القرآن وما قتلوه وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم they killed him not. They crucified him not. But what about us Muslims? They always ask us about the concept of salvation in Islam. We tell them the concept of salvation in Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam, is in these deeds that we do. Here, Ramadan, forgiven. Here is one day, the ninth of the Hijjah, you perform fasting one day, you get previous year and the coming year forgiven. So the concept of salvation is a responsibility upon each one of us. We as Muslims, we do not sit and say, there is somebody who already sacrificed his life for me and I all I have to do is just believe this this is absolutely not we as Muslims we must strive to fast the ninth day of the Hijjah in order to get our previous and our future sins forgiven one last act brothers and sisters in Islam is the act of sacrifice and like I mentioned if you are planning to offer a Qurbani then you must refrain Hadith Sunnah from uh, cutting your nails and shaving any of your hair. Of course, this does not invalidate your qurbani if you do not do it, but this is a recommended act that you should do. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in closing, if you are not in Hajj, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-amalu salih, the righteous deeds. In Arabic, if there is a noun that you connect 
ألف اللام which equals the in English that means any act of worship صلاة تهجد ذكر قيام صدقة زكاة صدقة زكاة enjoying good forbidding evil smiling in the face of your brother helping the ummah helping your child helping the muslims volunteering in the masjid all of these are acts of worship that you must strive to perform during the 10 days of the hijjah in order to be receiving in order to be granted some of the rewards even if you are not in hajj brothers and sisters in islam till the next episode of the best days of the hijjah or the blessed days of the hijjah that is the name right here the blessed days of the hijjah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله My dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The blessed days of the Hijjah, brothers and sisters in Islam. Whosoever performs Hajj without committing any violation, he will come back like a newborn. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Fi Sahih al Bukhari, also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hadith Abi Hurairah as well. Al Umrah ila al Umrah kafaratul lima baynahuma. From Umrah to Umrah, it expiates the sins that you have committed in between. Wal Hajjul Mabrur laysa lahu thawabun illa al Jannah. An accepted Hajj, a Mabrur Hajj. And inshaAllah will explain that has no other reward but Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, if you go to perform Hajj and Umrah during these 10 days of the Hijjah, this is the best act that you can do. But I really would like to dedicate this episode of the They are blessed for those who are in Hajj. Yes, the best deed that you can do during these 10 days is to go to Hajj to perform that pillar a pillar which grants you a new beginning Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says wal hadith fil Bukhari wa Muslim min hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu an man hajja wa lam yarfuth wa lam yafsuq raja Inna alhamdulillah 